Welcome to Expert Insights on Buildings Canada. We're doing live interviews on the building show show floor here in Toronto. With me I have Andre LaRoche from the National Research Council of Canada and he just finished uh, one of his sessions on the update of part three on the National Building Code. So thank you very much for being here. Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> so the main question that I want to ask for you is what are some of the biggest changes to the 2015 editions of the National Building Code? Well, overall, first we had close to 550 changes to the 2010 edition of the National Building Code, National Plumbing Code, and National Fire Code. But the main changes, one of the most important ones, is related to the midrise combustible construction. So now the building code, we, allows, we allow the construction of six, up to six stories combustible building, which was not allowed before for Group C and Group D occupancy. So meaning that uh, now people will have more options, especially using wood buildings, to uh, wood products to build their buildings. Another important uh, change is the clarification on the requirement for foam plastics. There was a problem with the, um, some code users had a, a difficulty understanding what was the difference between combustible insulation and foam plastic insulation. So we clarified the requirement applying those insulation material to non-combustible buildings. So now I'm using, you know, technical words, but people that use the codes are aware of what I'm talking about and understand what I'm talking about. Another change that uh, is significant is the, uh, where do you provide smoke tightness requirement? Smoke tightness means that you prevent smoke from uh, reaching one fire compartment to another. A fire compartment can be a room, can be a corridor. So we, to, in order to identify those requirements or this, those problems, we send a survey out there. We ask uh, code regulators how they would apply the code in specific application, and we found out that their, their response was inconsistent. So we clarified that smoke tightness requirements are required in specific areas, especially when you have egress or path of egress to an exit. So basically, corridors, or any rooms that will lead you to uh, exit the building. Uh, we also uh, look at other requirements, which is as important as this one, is how to set up the fire resistance rating of uh, wall assemblies, ceiling assemblies, and floor assemblies using a methodology, which is called the component additive method. This one is like a sandwich. Each layer of the sandwich provides you some rating, and the, the summation of all those layers will provide you a rating for your wall assembly. Currently in the code, 2010 edition of the bidding code, you are limited in uh, type of materials that this would be applied, this recipe would apply. We expanded this uh, methodology, so now we have added additional material, we added additional application, load bearing, non-load bearing. We also add, add um, steel materials and uh, wood materials as well. So we have, we have now a new insulation. We now add the best and account for uh, resilient channels as well. Uh, so those are uh, important changes for the, the part three of the building code. Uh, there are other uh, changes that are related more to the, uh, talk about fire protection. So basically, when you have a fire, you want to prevent the fire to spread from one place to another. That we also look at the uh, use and egress, meaning that the use of the building and the egress, meaning that how do you help people safely evacuate the building. One of the important factor in this case is the accessibility. So accessibility deals with all the issues related to uh, having uh, helping people with uh, uh, impairment to access a building and to egress the building as well. So we introduced a new standard, which is the CSAB 51 standard, which we, um, people dealing with accessibility issues are all familiar with. In the bidding code for the next edition of the code, we said, oh, by the way, you have two options. You use the NBC requirements or the CSA requirement. The NBC will provide you the, guide, the uh, application statement, and the CSA will provide you the design requirement. So basically, where do you need something? The NBC will provide you those guidelines. How you need to 
apply those requirements will be found in your CSA. So we did, on top of it, we said, okay, that's good to reference a standard, so how can we have this transition from the MBC to the CSA? And we decided to reshuffle the entire section where, which deals with accessibility so that we have a, a new subsection. I'm using, again, terminology, but for those people that are codes, should be aware of that. So now we have clarified the application statement, and we also have clarified the options where you have all the design requirements. And we kept the design requirements that were found in the building code in the next edition of the code so that we have a transition phase, and then code designer, well, designers will have the option of either using the NBC for the design requirements or the CSC uh, design requirement. One of our other important uh, changes applies also to guards, the design of guards, especially for dwelling units. This applies to part three and part nine buildings. The difference in part three and part nine buildings is related to the uh, number of stories and the building area. Currently in the code, you are not allowed to uh, use uh, ornamental design or any design that will favor the climbability of the guard. We did a, a, a literature review internationally and nationally, and we were unable to find any incident that we can directly relate to the fact that someone climbed on a guard, fell, and injured himself. Okay, so that's good. So how can we address this in the code? So the code said you're not allowed to have this design. In 2015, we will allow the design to be climbable to a certain height. So basically, as soon as you have an elevation difference that is higher than one story or 4.2 meters, higher than, then you will not be able to have climbable guards on your design for your guards. But anything below this 4.2 meters or one story, then you will be able to use any design whatsoever because it was found that the level of safety providing with people falling over those uh, guards is acceptable. So this is a, a good example of how to deal with codes and taking in consideration that we are not addressing all the constraints and all the safety for all and everyone, but most likely we will reduce the potential of injuries or even death when someone falls from a guard. And, uh, that's a good example. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Andre. That's actually you, all the time that we have for today. You've done a wonderful job, and uh, thank you to CMD for letting us host these interviews in their booth. And for everybody that's watching at home, if you like this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We will be releasing more videos as the year goes on. Thanks, and see you again. Thank you.